Mr. President, Sri Lanka has taken serious note of the, of the observations made during the debate on, the, on item 4. We are encouraged by the fact that the majority of the members have commended our commitment to post-conflict nation building. Instead of being unfairly castigated repeatedly by a few states, hell-bent on pursuing their agendas and their agendas alone at all cost. We are, however, more than conscious that there is no room for triumphalism. Mr. President, we have seen in some states a whole license of interference by way of a plethora of powerful pressurizing tactics at which even the hardest of critics might want to blush. We want those states to know that we will continue our engagement with them nonetheless and welcome working together in a spirit of true partnership as our equal and friend. You may note and appreciate that the deliberate targeting of civilians never formed part of the military strategy of our forces. This is not to deny civilian casualties which may have occurred as collateral damage. This is not peculiar only to Sri Lanka. Such casualties do occur particularly when one party uses the civilians and civilian centers and establishments as a central part of its combat strategy. You will appreciate that in such a situation the contours of the traditional battlefield recedes into the background with unfortunate consequences to civilians. However, the principles of distinction and proportionality which form the cornerstone of the principles of IHL were observed by our security forces. Our military strategy ensured that civilian populations and civilian establishments were never made the targets of deliberate attack. The commanders on the ground have been thoroughly trained in the requirements of international humanitarian law and its governing principles. The strict observance of these principles and the law as developed in the context of an interstate conflict and clearly demarcated battle lines is not, you will appreciate, an easy task when engaging a terrorist group. However, the conduct of our security forces to ensure minimum casualties was better than any in the world and should be commended. Sri Lanka's priority now is reconstruction, reintegration and rehabilitation in the post-conflict phase which we propose to approach in a spirit of true reconciliation. What is therefore required is the constructive engagement by the international community in our efforts to achieve these objectives which are already underway. We are tirelessly working towards a comprehensive solution to the problems of our internally displaced. We have already resettled more than 10,000 persons who have been reunited with their families. We have permitted the host families to receive persons over 60 years and children, wherever the host families have economic capacity to accommodate such persons. We are approaching the political process with equally great care. You will appreciate that elections alone do not make a rude democracy. It is therefore necessary to insist that those who seek the benefits of the democratic process accept its underlying principles as well. We are currently engaged in a program to restore our displaced population to their original habitats and livelihoods with the assistance of the international community. Isn't it then of paramount importance that we unconditionally support that process and not distract ourselves by indulging in counterproductive rhetoric, undue pressure and posturing of other multifarious measures? Do we, to indulge in the latter would only make the domestic situation in Sri Lanka more difficult. It is therefore regrettable that the principle of majority intergovernmental decisions making process does not appear to be fully appreciated by the EU. Are we then to pay lip service to these procedures that would be an academic? To give this un serious departure. It is therefore our plea that Sri Lanka I thank you with the ongoing recon reconciliation process and not allow ourselves to be overcome by the agenda of some states. Thank you, Mr. President.